So you might remember that Big Mac Bill Shorten has some trouble answering basic questions like how much are your radical climate change policies going to cost? Labor has a different view about what creates a strong economy. What creates a strong economy is fairness and decency. You're not answering the question, Mr Shorten. Oh, OK. I'm going to give someone else a go. Answer the question, when can people know? When can people know, Mr Shorten, the cost of the economy? You didn't answer the question. Do you know what, John? I'm going to go to the next person. No, you should answer the question. That's why we're here, to ask questions, and you're not answering the question. When can people expect to know, Mr Shorten, the cost of the economy? Why can't you answer the question, Mr Shorten? Because I'm going to give your colleagues half a go. No, because you should answer it. Why can't you answer the question, Mr Shorten? Well, now it seems not only can't Bill Shorten answer questions, but you can't even ask Bill Shorten a question... That is, if you want to keep your job. You see, an engineer working at the Gladstone Ports in Queensland was allegedly suspended for talking to Bill Shorten on April 23rd. But it's not really about talking to Bill Shorten so much as asking the wrong question of Bill Shorten. Here's the full horrific eight-second video of the incident. Now, in case you didn't catch that, he said it would be good to give higher wage income earners a tax break because a lot of the guys here do overtime. They earn $250,000 a year because they work nights. Now, here's what happened. Immediately afterward, according to the Courier-Mail, which I don't have access to, the 49-year-old electrical engineer in the video was told he was in breach of contract for speaking to the media. Apparently, the next day his workers' pass did not work, and last week his desk was packed up and its contents delivered to his house. The Gladstone Ports Corporation told the Courier-Mail the individual, a subcontractor, not a Gladstone Ports Corporation employee, was not in a position to speak with any knowledge or authority on behalf of the organisation. So clearly they were pissed because a non-Gladstone Ports employee spoke on behalf of guys that are Gladstone Ports employees, who would like to keep more of their money. But why would the ports give a shit? Well, perhaps former Premier of Queensland, Campbell Newman, has the answer. It is a very big story, Gemma, absolutely. And if I could just take a moment to explain a few facts to our viewers. Firstly, um, the Gladstone Port Corporation is a government-owned corporation. It's owned by the state government. We have a Labor state government. Uh, What's happened here is this uh, gentleman is actually a contractor, a valued contractor, or was a valued contractor working for the corporation, went to a barbecue that was put on, a free barbecue for the workers, uh, I would understand, so that they could all mix and mingle with Bill Shorten, with the media there. Uh, The encounters then happened. Apparently, Shorten sought him out. Uh, He approached him, not the other way around, and then uh, the comment was picked up by uh, one or two of the media outlets and it has embarrassed uh, the opposition leader because he was caught out telling porkies. Well, within a day or two, this bloke suddenly found that his security card didn't work anymore and he was told that he was out because he'd spoken to the media. So the state government, which is currently a Labor government, perhaps felt the need to tow the party line. Now, the Gladstone Ports Corporation seem to be playing a little loose with the truth. Here is their official statement, which strangely has no date on it. Gladstone Ports Corporation, GPC, did not suspend a port worker or terminate their contract for talking to opposition leader Bill Shorten, as has been suggested by media commentators. The port worker, a subcontractor, is still employed by the contractor and carrying out work for their employer. GPC did not instruct any employees or contractors to attend the visit. The worker is a subcontractor and as such, GPC cannot comment on any decisions made by their employers. Further on in the story, it's noted that the Gladstone Ports Corporation has not explained why the workers' pass stopped working on April 24 or why his desk has been packed up. Merely an oversight, I'm sure. I mean, it's not like the guy cornered Shorten for a gotcha moment in front of the cameras. The story, according to the father of three, was that he had forgotten his lunch the day of Shorten's visit and attended a free barbecue, which was presumably put on for Shorten, and he became caught up in the media scrum. As Newman said, it was Shorten that approached him 
not the other way around. Now, this electrical engineer was unwilling to comment over fears about finding full-time work. And yes, of course, if you engage in wrong think these days, like arguing that you should be able to keep more of your own money, you have to be careful that your livelihood will be destroyed. After the Courier-Mail began asking questions about the issue last Friday, it is understood the man was contacted by electrical contracting firm Wellcon Technologies, informing him his suspension had been lifted. However, he had already taken on a short-term job elsewhere. Wellcon failed to return calls yesterday. So did the state government-owned Gladstone Ports Corporation lean on the contracting firm he worked for? Or was that just another oversight? Now, of course, it should be said no one is suggesting that Shorten himself sent down a message to have this guy made an example of. Shorten later said that people are allowed to express their opinions and they should be able to do so without fear or favour. Full stop says the guy who wants to add another Human Rights Commissioner for LGBTI issues to the Human Shakedown Commission. If there's any scandal here, it should be around Hamburglar Bill's statement that we're going to look at that, because as everyone knows, he's already had a look at people that earn high incomes and decided to tax them more to help pay for his exorbitant spending spree. Now, if that contractor happens to watch this video, I would like to direct him to the Liberal Democrats' tax calculator page where you can put in your income, how much you spend on fuel, cigarettes and alcohol and find out how much you'll save under our tax plan. For someone earning $250,000 a year, is a non-smoker, spends $50 a week on fuel and drinks a lazy slab of beer a month, you'll save almost $45,000 a year. So if you hate having more money in your pocket, make sure you don't vote Liberal Democrats this Saturday. I'll see you next time.